at 7.30 a.m. if Todd Lodwig is not happy. He's realized he's brought the wrong socks. Now, for most people, wearing the wrong socks is not a big deal. But when you see what Lodwig does for a living, you might see why his routine is so important to him. Most of the time when I'm at the top, I'm thinking about the first impulse of my move off the jump. Uh, you know, going down the in run, getting into that position. But, you know, once you let go of the bar, there's no turning back. And, uh, you know, as many times as we've done this, hopefully you've trained your brain to uh, jump at the right time. Todd is a world champion in Nordic Combined, an Olympic event that combines two sports, ski jumping and cross-country skiing. We ski with the same equipment, the same skis, the same suits, the same helmet, usually our lucky socks, and it simulates the winter time as close as possible. Growing up in the atmosphere in which I grew up in, we had a, a ski jump that was accessible and uh, that's just what we did when we grew up. We, we skied and sometimes and most of us ski jumped. For people on the outside looking in, how do you do that? Um, you know, for me it's natural. It's like riding a bike. In a sport largely dominated by Europeans, Americans have not typically placed in competition. Lodwig is the only American to have won two gold medals at the World Championships, and no American has ever won an Olympic medal in Nordic combined. Basically, if I jump 10 points in front of you, I'm roughly going to start 45 seconds in front of you in the cross country. Again, the first person that crosses the finish line is the winner. It usually happens, jump in the morning, have an hour break, put on your cross country stuff, and get it on. So here's how it works. The skiers use a ski lift to get from the bottom of the hill to the foot of the jumping ramp. Then they climb up about 180 stairs while their coaches wait like birds on a wire at the jump point. The plastic ramp is kept wet with sprinklers for fast sliding. The coaches signal like air traffic controllers and the human jets slide down the runway. Todd and his teammates will do about eight jumps on the ski tower today. The skiers will travel about 1,230 feet and drop roughly 64 stories in about 20 seconds. One thing we noticed at the Olympic ski jumping complex is that the coaches like to start their athletes young. This little one is 12. Ski jumpers use a breathable, slightly loose suit that helps with lift, and extra long, light skis that kind of act like wings. Just like an airplane, uh, we like jumping into headwind, they like landing into it, so um, the more headwind we get, the better it is for us. The more tailwind, the worse off we are. You know, we are a sport that's smaller than, than most of the big sports that are looked at, and we're at the point where we're getting more media exposure because of the results that we've had. So going into these Olympic Games, we as a team are really excited about grabbing that first Olympic medal. I think that uh, you're going to see a team of Nordic combined skiers from the U.S. Uh, really prove something at the Olympic Games in, in Vancouver. At the ski tower, it could take up to two hours to do eight jumps. So after morning training is done, Todd heads over to the gym to do imos, or imitation jumps. He and his coach will do 15 to 20 practice jumps and carefully dissect and rebuild his form to perfect the takeoff. But I think even more deliberate in the beginning, yep. take your time with that push. That initial move is what I'm looking for, that first impulse to get it going in the right direction. We're trying to get him to go this way, push against the takeoff to effectively raise, you're trying to get as high as you can um, while you're keeping the speed that you have, and it's a trade-off between the two. My jumping is just fine, it's the hill that sucks. Todd takes a little break to see if I have any natural ski jumping ability. I always wanted to see a reporter get in our shoes. Just jump. I'm just gonna jump. 100%, jump, 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 jump. That's not a jump. <laughs> All right, Todd, you saw my jumps there. Uh, do I have any shot as a ski jumper? 
I'd love to be the bearer of good news, but I can't be that person today. Um, but maybe in a couple years, we'll get you on real snow and see what you can do. I think that's a challenge. I'd like to see an actual ski jump. What do you, th what do you guys think? An actual ski jump? I think so. I can't even jump off that thing. I don't think <laughs> no, I'm depending on snow anytime. If, uh, if you get beat by a five-year-old, I think we're gonna have some, some issues. Some people say that Nordic Combine is twice as hard and twice the work. Remember that the ski jump portion of the competition is only half the sport. After this, Todd will often do up to 30 miles of cross-country training on either roller skis or on snow. And as a father, being away from home for months at a time can take a toll on his family. It's hard being away from the family, especially right now. My daughter's, uh, you know, three and a half, and she definitely cries herself to sleep sometimes uh, when I'm away. So that's 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 definitely hard. But uh, she always asks if I'm bringing trophies home, and you know, it's and I, can't, I, can't, I can't lie to her. So and if you uh, don't, does she get mad at her? I, I pick something up here for her. <laughs> to Americans, Nordic combined is the obscurest of the obscure Winter Olympic sports. Thousands of miles away from his family, in this gym. Lodwick is trying to change that. Any Vancouver success could bring much needed visibility to his sport. So this time, maybe he won't be buying trophies at the airport. He'll be bringing home the real thing. This is Sean Gregory, reporting for Time.com.